Growing up with Czech grandparents, um, you know, the food, the culture, the language, it was always something that was neat to me. Uh, having taken a mission trip in 2000, I was at Emmanuel Bible College and I was in a, in a course, sports ministry, and couldn't believe that, you know, like hockey and missions, like I love the Lord and I love hockey. So like to combine them would be really amazing. I went on the trip and it, it changed my life. Um, went back the next year to a, a four month missionary training school where I met Rachel. So our, our, our relationship really began in the Czech. And, and then we came home and, and we got married, we had kids and uh, God started to move in our hearts to, to go back to check and to, to, to lead these hockey trips. So we did that and that led to us moving there. Um, you know, and after we came home in 2010, having gone through what we went through, there was a time where, you know, I, I, I came home with the girls, I said to them, you know, I don't, don't even speak Czech, please. I just, I was so hurt. And God just began to heal that. And in his timing, in the fullness of his timing, uh, he, called us back. The main focus was to build up the local church. The percentage of believers in Czech is, is incredibly small and it's very, very hard soil to work, yet they're working very faithfully. So we wanted to be a blessing and, and use the fact that we're Canadian or that we speak English or, or whatever it is, if, if God can use that to, to garner and gain some attention in the community, uh, that's what we wanted to do. Before the trip, I had said, I want God to pick this team. Like, I, I want who he wants there. And, and it, at the end of the day, even though there's people, I'm like, oh, I'd love it if they came. Uh, I knew that it had to be something the Lord was doing. With Chris and, and Brandon coming along, uh, it was such a blessing to have them there. Chris has such a clear picture of ministry there, and God really revealed to him that what that church is and how they are a light in their community. Mm -hmm. To have Carol and, and Tim there, who, you know, I told them both, they were they were spiritual pillars. Like they, they question at times, what what am I gonna do? It's a hockey trip or how's God gonna use me? And I, I told them like, you guys were like pillars, like mm -hmm. literally spiritual pillars that I leaned on so often. Uh, because when it came time to pray, when it came time to get out, I mean, they were chomping at the bit. They couldn't wait to get on the prayer walk. They couldn't wait to get out there and minister. Uh, every time we were in a situation where there was an opportunity to minister, I'd look over and they were they were mm -hmm. doing that. And just to see my girls are like come alive and, and they were helping to lead worship. They were playing the bongos and the tambourine and uh, it was that was actually personally one of the, the most amazing gifts for, for us, I think, as parents to see them mm -hmm. really embrace what we were doing and and recognize that God is using them. That's that was a huge prayer for us that they wouldn't just be baggage that they wouldn't come along and just feel like they were being dragged along from place to place but everywhere they went they were equally as much a part of that team and to have that team that God picked uh, that really just I mean that mm -hmm. gives you energy and, and it, it makes you excited and we spent most of our mornings we were in public schools like high schools one of the members of the church is a teacher and throughout the weeks, we'd go to schools and, and colleagues would talk and teachers would tell teachers and the, the church started getting phone calls requesting for our group. So we kept adding to the amount of schools we were going to. The one Thursday we visited an orphanage where we had an opportunity. Carol actually shared her testimony there. At, at a point in each hockey game, usually between the second and third period, one of us would share a testimony. And actually Tim shared the, the, the one Tuesday evening. And it was just a really anointed message of hope uh, he shared his testimony, how God brought him to a pl from a place of hopelessness to giving him hope and, and a future. And in a country like the Czech Republic, it was, it was amazing to see uh, the looks on the guys' faces in the dressing room when you looked around and they weren't, it wasn't a joke. Uh, they, they, they knew that this guy was serious, that he had no hope they could relate to that. And they heard that there's hope available for them too. We did a, a youth service on the Friday night. And in the past, we've done things like that in the Czech in different ministries, and we've never seen the kind of fruit that we saw. Over a dozen people uh, who've never been to the church before showed up. Students, um, you know, they stayed all night till, till midnight. Even one of the teachers from the school came and uh, they heard the gospel. We shared a testimony. There was, there was worship in both English and Czech. Uh, we played some really fun games. and. It was an incredible time and then to even turn around on the Sunday 
and see some of these same people at the church service uh, where, where Chris uh, spoke and gave a message for the church. And it was the culmination of our week's work. It's, uh, it's a long haul thing. Like it's not, I, I, we'll see, I mean, in my mind, I could draw all kinds of pictures and, and really, honestly, I could get way ahead of myself and way ahead of the Lord and say, oh, we could do this and we could do that. And, and I've learned, you know, I'm through my, my life experience and uh, what little maturity I've gained in my life, I have learned to say, okay, just slow down a bit and, and be patient and let God, let God lead us. So, um, but with that said, what I feel especially confirmed through the word that Pastor Rob had for us this past Sunday um, was just, it's okay to dream. And God is giving us this desire in our heart for a reason and we can embrace it. Um, and so it's from Him. It's, it's from Him. We haven't materialized it, it's from Him and, and it's safe. I was a youth pastor for a church at one time uh, and, and led a team, even took some of our youth, but, but never felt that, like that we had been sent by the church, never felt that, that embracing the way we felt. So, so to have this church uh, get behind it, support it, encourage it, pray for it, the difference it There's is... There's no words to compare, no, and it's the, amazing. The authority, the blessing to walk in that, it made a huge difference. Mm. Yeah. We felt spiritually the covering of prayer. I mean, I thought of it so many times that I just knew I knew there are people at home from Wilmot Center, they're praying for us right now. Like we are seriously covered in prayer and it was felt from one end of the trip to the other.